Hello again. Welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. I'd like to welcome anybody who is a new subscriber, anyone who just started following me in the last two weeks. If you've just discovered the Master's Voice Prophecy Blog and End Times uh, YouTube channel, that's the, the full name, but anyway, um, you're very welcome. And of course, uh, I'm saying hi again to everybody who traditionally goes to the blog, visits the blog, leaves comments. I appreciate everybody who visits the blog because this work is for the glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is his work. And now, as I explained before, in case anyone is just picking up this video for the first time, this channel is to support the blog. So this channel is not intended to overtake the blog. I still very much am uh, a writer first, but this channel was, um, I think, the Lord's idea to give um, more depth and to make the, the prophecies more personal. And I've seen in the comment section, some people have shared that when they try to share prophecy with other people, those people don't even want to listen if they don't see a face attached to that, which is um, different uh, because I, I, I love reading. That's my top medium, uh, how I get my communication, how I get my news. So I, I love to read, but I understand, and God was absolutely right, that the channel actually needed digitization. And so uh, here is the blog in... Um, I guess a more accessible form. So uh, today I continue with prophecies on Russia. Um, I did say that there were themes that the Lord was bringing forth. So one of those themes was consistently, the most consistent theme is judgment, that the Lord has passed judgment on the United States for her crimes, for the sins that she has committed um, against the Lord for the hard-heartedness and the refusal to repent. Um, I posted recently on the blog about uh, repentance, and I was I was really chewing on that all week. You know, I was really thinking about it, thinking about national repentance as a whole, and how it it will definitely go such a far way to moving the Lord's heart to compassion, to stilling the Lord's anger, such as it is, for it really is great. I know that many people do not believe that God is angry with America. And then some people do not believe that God has a right to be angry with America more than other nations. But if you will go back and check previous prophecies that I've made, I shared that the Lord said that when you are ahead, when you are the first, when you are the firstborn, you get more privileges, you get the larger inheritance, but you also get more responsibility. So if you abdicate that responsibility, if you fail in that responsibility, or if you become a bully because of the first place that has been given to you, a place, mind you, that you didn't earn, a place that you didn't actually make yourself. It is God who founded this nation. It doesn't matter what any of the different special interest groups in this nation think or claim. This is a nation that was founded at God's pleasure. He was the one who was pleased to free her from British oppression, British rule, and British colonization and make her a sovereign nation. He gave her wealth. He gave her influence. And in the beginning, he gave her piety. What exactly is piety? Piety is holiness. Piety is reticence and keeping yourself from moral corruption. So it was the spirit of the Lord God that was upon this nation that gave her all the good graces that made her not just another colony, another far-flung British colony, but made her the great, the famous and revered United States. But if we were to pretend that I was holding a book and we turn the pages of time, this nation has fallen very far from her founding father's vision. She has fallen, fallen very far from the original blueprint that the Lord had in mind for her. She's no longer a golden cup in the hands of the Lord. She's no longer that bright and blazing torch upon the hilltop where the huddled and broken masses can come to. Um, America is now uh, greatly defunct um, as a world leader. Yes, she still holds the number one place categorically in many areas, but this nation is fumbling. And if anybody cares to look beyond 
um, the hyperbole of the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post. I really hope that I do not get sued. But anyway, this is just free commentary. Everybody's making videos and sharing their opinion. But if we care to really study the moral fabric of the nation, if we care to see where America is now, she's defunct in a lot of her areas, politically striving, struggling, so much strife in the top office of the land, so much sniping between leaders, um, inability to just coalesce and work as one founding nation. There is so much going on. And even at the lower level, even at the level where it's just ordinary people, me and you, you see so much crime, you see so much corruption, you just see what the Bible says, the love of man is growing cold. And the violence that is bubbling up through the cracks, the violence that is seeping up through the cracks is indicative of a great heart ill in America. The Lord God says that America is sick that there is no sound place in her for the dove of the spirit to land. The Lord God has even said many times that even the church, this is you, this is me, um, 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 even the church is abdicating her responsibility. A few days ago, um, as soon as I woke up, as soon as I woke up, it's very often that I'm sleeping and the Lord is talking to me in my sleep and then I just segue out of sleep into wakefulness and he continues speaking to me but this time I really was sleeping but as soon as I came to consciousness the Lord said to me do they really understand repentance and this is what set me off on this quest to start restudying repentance and thinking about it in relation to my own life he said to me celestial do they really understand repentance do they really know what it is Repentance is to not just say, God, I won't do it again. Repentance is to hate your sin. And to hate your sin, you first have to acknowledge that it is sin. You have to say that this is a behavior that is directly contrary to what the Lord God wants me as his child to practice, me as his child to think about, me as his child to look at me as his child to, to hunger for and have an have a appetite for and desire. This fights against God in my life. And I have got to first accept that this behavior is not acceptable to God before I will have strength and I will receive grace from the master to root it out. If we do not find our appetites, the things we hunger for, the things that we want, um, it's like a taste in the mouth. If we do not find the taste in our mouth offensive, we have no reason to cleanse our palate. We don't think that there's anything wrong with it. We say, let me be free. We say, don't judge. We say, well, who are you to judge me? You're not actually in relationship with me. I'm not comfortable with you speaking into my life. There are so many different fallacies out there, one of them being that you cannot rebuke a sinful behavior unless you're the pastor of a person, or you're the elder, or you're a deacon, and I don't know where we're getting these things, because we're supposed to speak to one another in love, and love is not, love is not ally culture. Love is not lying to a person if a person is practicing sinful behaviors, um, sinful habits, you know, lying, stealing, but other things that are more hidden in the heart, like lust, like pride, like perversions, you know, um, brothers and sisters, the pedophilia that's being uncovered in this nation is shocking so many people. I see it in the social media spaces all the time. Everyone is like, oh, I can't watch. I can't watch this video of this little child being defiled. How could this happen? And I'm thinking, these are behaviors that are thousands of years old. These behaviors are not unique to the United States, nor are they brand new. There's not like a group of people who suddenly thought, I'm, I'm going to eschew adult sexual company and I'm going straight for the kids. And I'm going to start this maybe in 1980 or maybe this is 1990. The Lord has shown me visions that showed that even the people who came here to found this nation, that they used to do this in Great Britain. Oh yes, brothers and sisters, 
Some of the things I see, they leave me absolutely baffled. I mean, I wake up and sometimes I'm not even sure if I'm here in New York City because in my sleep, I was somewhere else and it was so real that at times I'm even concerned for my own safety, um, sort of, oh, I, I hope these people don't see me. I have seen things that were taking place in, I don't know, 15th century, 14th century, 19th century or 18th century London, um, taking place in catacombs beneath the earth, the things that people were doing there, high ranking people, judges, governors, um, you know, the lords and ladies of the day. They had this penchant for children. They had this penchant for flesh. And that flesh, that desire, that hunger, that taste in the mouth, it came across on the boats with them. And it has continued to worm its way in the underground. And the only reason that it's seeping up through the cracks is because the day of judgment is getting closer and the pot has started to boil. The boiling pot has started to boil and now all of America's sits are coming out. Her wrinkles are being exposed. Her hidden hunger, her hidden penchant for flesh is coming to the forefront. And I think, um, though some of this is not at all what I intended to say, but whenever I make these videos, I always ask the Lord to use my mouth just as he desires. I think that that is a fitting introduction to the prophecy that the Lord gave me today. Uh, I hope to be able to make at least two parts of it, but the prophecy is entitled, Send for Their Flesh. So let us begin. This is a future word, meaning that it is not a word for immediate fulfillment. Bear in mind that this word will come to pass. This is an intense prophecy. Therefore, when you visit the vlog, when you visit the blog to, to read this prophecy, I, I ask you to please read it carefully because there's many things and many themes in this one prophecy and many pieces of information were given to me by the Lord and I hope to be able to get through as much of it as possible, maybe in one or two videos. I broke the word up on the blog into different sections for convenience. So the first part of the word is called send for their flesh. The second part is called flesh, Russia. And the third part is called flesh, China. This prophecy was given to me on June the 27th, 2019. So it's already more than a year old. The Lord gave me specific verses to read and please don't skip it. Please be in the habit of uh, visiting this prophetic blog with your Bible. Please don't just come with whatever um, self-formed opinions you might have or whatever pa um, paradigms that may exist from your church, what your pastor told you. Um, for obvious reasons, I'm not your church and I'm not your pastor. Uh, I'm here presenting the prophetic word of the Lord as it has been delivered to me. And therefore, um, it's not even your own heart or your own opinion that is best suited to vet this word. The best thing to vet this word is the word itself. Let the word of God weigh the word. So we will now go to Isaiah chapter 20, which is just um, uh, six verses. And I read paraphrase. In the year that the supreme commander sent by Sargon, king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and attacked and captured it, at that time, the Lord spoke through Isaiah, the son of Amos. He said to him, take off the sackcloth from your body and the sandals from your feet. And Isaiah did so, going around stripped naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, just as my servant Isaiah has gone stripped naked and barefoot for three years as a sign and warning against Egypt and Cush, in the same way, the king of Assyria will lead away stripped naked and barefoot, the Egyptian captives and the Cushite exiles, young and old, with their buttocks bared to Egypt's shame. Those who trusted in Cush 
and boasted in Egypt will be dismayed and put to shame. In that day, the people who live on this coast will say, see what has happened to those we relied on, those we ran to for help and deliverance from the king of Assyria. How then can we escape? So this very short chapter is talking about Egypt and Cush. Those are not small nations by any means. These, these were well-known nations in the ancient world, you know, very highly developed. In fact, some of the developments in the nation of Egypt, especially even modern science and modern society cannot quite make sense of the contraptions that they have, the complicated mathematics that they had, um, the very intricate building methods that they had, such as brought about um, the precision of the pyramids at Giza. Up to this day, they can't quite figure out how the bricks fit together so perfectly that you can't even insert the blade of a knife between them. So contrary to what Darwin said, which is that as the species advance, it gets smarter. Uh, for all you Darwinists out there, you evolutionists who think that things get better as they grow, the ancient world actually puts that kind of reasoning to shame because they have so many things back from back then, including Stonehenge and the way that they could read the stars and things like that without any of the modern implements that we had today. And yet they were precise down to the last decimal without the advancements that we had today. This should be an indication that there was a lot going on in ancient civilizations that we absolutely have no idea about today. So these two nations were very strong fighting nations, but as I've spoken about nations like Assyria and Babylon before, these nations were faster, swifter, and much better at war. So the Lord was giving Isaiah a prophecy of a coming time when a nation that was faster and better and swifter and more cunning than even these two nations that were no stranger to battle, no stranger to warfare, better, a better, stronger nation in the person of Assyria would come to them, strike them, beat them, and then there was one particular characteristic that God mentioned about the kind of captivity that would come to them. God said <clears throat> that they would be taken as slaves and that these slaves would be naked and barefoot. These are the observations that I made. This aspect of being naked and barefoot was a very big part even of modern slavery. A naked and a barefoot person cannot run far, can't hide, can't do anything really except follow their captors into captivity. This is because when you're naked, you're not going to go hide in the bushes. It's, it hurts. It scratches. It, it, it's painful. You don't have shoes. You can't run far. And when you're naked, you're extremely vulnerable. Even if you're running far and you come across another group of people, God forbid, you're a woman, you're going to almost wish that you had stayed with the captors because it goes without saying what the new bunch of people who see a naked woman running by herself will be prone to do to her. Bear in mind Transporting naked human beings inspires lust. It inspires cruelty. When the Lord started off this prophecy by pointing to nakedness and captivity, I knew that it was going to be a serious prophecy. God said to Isaiah that Isaiah should remove his clothing and he should walk around in Israel for three years naked and barefoot. Brothers and sisters, this just goes to show you that the prophetic is not something to play with. People out there think it's so amazing and they, and they and especially in church, we think, oh my goodness, I, I want to be a prophet and, and I just, I, I'm in the prophetic, you know, I, 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 I think I'm prophetic because God has shown me this and this and this about myself. And I just, I just think to myself, you know, um, do people really understand the level of sanctification that it takes, the level of submittedness, the, the way you have to basically set aside your own life and your own personhood to become that much of a blank slate that you can take on at times when he desires it, the nature of God, which means that the anger of God, sometimes you feel it, you're not angry. Sometimes you feel the chagrin of God, you feel the remorse, you feel the grief. You're not having those emotions. 
These are the Lord's emotions, and yet you need to be available to give him room to express himself. Here's God taking off Isaiah's robe. Isaiah was a well-known prophet. Isaiah was a man of respect, and yet God said, all right, time to get out there with your bits and pieces for three years. In some cultures, it is very well understood that walking around naked is a sign of madness. So you can imagine what people thought when they were looking at Isaiah. He didn't do this for three weeks. He didn't do it for three months. He didn't do it for 30 months. He had to do it for three years. That is a lot. So when the Lord said this to me, it brought back the America and Chains vision. I already made a video of that, thank goodness. So you can go back to that video and see what God was saying about the punishment for nakedness. And I will share here that there are several reasons that the Lord said he will bring this particular type of punishment upon the United States. He said for lewdness, for the fact that America is very sexually lewd, very sexually provocative. She loves nakedness as in when her people go into the stores and they have a choice to pick their apparel. They have a choice to choose how they're going to attire themselves, how they're going to present themselves. Everybody's heart is turned towards flesh, showing flesh, cleavage, buttocks, um, the midriff area, the top area at the back, you know, where your pants are supposed to be pulled up. I, I just think that people have an aversion to belts these days, personally, male and female. Nobody seems to want to buy one or wear one, but that's just me. Um, and so for lewdness, for promiscuity, for sexual immorality, for the perversion of the nation, both at the head, in the leadership, brothers and sisters, it is there. In the Bible, it says in Isaiah chapter one, the whole head is sick. The whole head is corrupt. That is as apt a depiction as we can find today of what is going on in this nation and many nations worldwide. So for various reasons, for this reason, God said that when the punishment comes, because you love to show flesh, because you love to flash flesh, your punishment will come in flesh. It will be paid in flesh. Your flesh will be uncovered. It will be bared and it will also be pierced. When your flesh is pierced, it means that you will undergo very many hardships that strike you in the bone. Piercing of flesh doesn't only mean that we're going to pierce an earlobe here or somebody's going to pierce their private part right here. No, when something pierces flesh, it means that this is a particular type of punishment that will be felt in the bone, meaning that you will feel the pain of it, the sorrow of it to your marrow, and you will lament, and you will cry out, and you will wish with all your strength that you had never done the things that have brought you to such a horrible end. So um, in the America in Chains vision, which I shared, uh, I shared that America was um, captive. She was made naked. The last of her modesty that she was trying to cover with the American flag uh, blew away and she was naked and Russia and China took her by the wrist. They put chains on her and then pulling those chains they carried her down to the sea um, and she became part of the spoils of war, which means her people, herself, um, was part of the spoils of war and she was carried off in ships to work as debtors and to work as slaves in foreign countries. And what the Lord revealed in this vision was that the people taken away will never see the United States again, that their lives would be spent and ended in captivity and he also said that this particular type of punishment would be a punishment for the wickedness against the original slaves that America kept so long ago. So I have a few prophecies here and there where the Lord is speaking to me 
I'm writing it down. I'm writing as fast as my fingers will go, either with my phone, mostly with the laptop, because that gives me a wider range and I can be faster um, using that interface. And then suddenly the, the prophecy shifts and the Lord will say, indeed, I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten the cry of my people. I, will, I have not forgotten how they begged for mercy and no mercy was shown them. I have not forgotten how they begged and they cried for comfort and no comfort was shown them. I have not forgotten how their children were ripped away from them. And that, that, was, that was some of the, the heartbreakingness of slavery in the U.S. is that families were not allowed to stay together. Fathers were separated from children. Mothers were separated from their spouses. Um, families were separated and sent to such far parts of the country that for the rest of their lives, they never saw one another again. And they lived with that particular pain there's an ache when your family is taken away from you. In fact, most of you, if you have kids of college age and, and you had to drive your kids up to wherever it is that the kid decided, I wanna go to school. And many, many of our children decided as soon as they were uh, emancipated <laughs> uh, majors by the age of 18, they decided that they would go to school as far away from us as possible. And so they picked the East Coast if they lived on the West, and they picked the West Coast if they lived on the East, or they picked um, Middle America, and we had to drive them there or fly them there and watch them set up their rooms, and then we had to leave them. And on the drive back, especially moms, you feel this ache, you feel this pain, you feel this sorrow, like, oh, my baby's gone, you know? And just imagine now uh, seeing little ones, children who are not uh, college going age, they're not even school going age, uh, ripped from a mother, ripped from a father, the father sold somewhere. He will never know the comfort of his wife again. He will never look into her eyes. He has to live with the knowledge that his wife is out there and that a man who doesn't know her or love her um, has full access to her uh, to make her work, to make her serve him, and to even give him sexual favors if that man is so inclined. Sexual favors. Um, I can't even call them favors. It was just flesh was taken advantage of so greatly during that period of America's history. And without making a commentary on it, all I can say is that the Lord emphatically says to this nation, he has not forgotten. He is not asleep. He was not blind to it. And even though the narrative today is that was in the past, let's rebuild let's not look backward, let's get over it, that was so long ago, I'm not responsible, uh, my family never had any slaves, the Lord continues to say, I, Celestial, am telling you from the master's voice, if no other channel is saying this, and I understand that there will be incredible backlash when this comes out, but all I say is in, in as even toned a voice and approach as I can, I am not responsible or what the Lord says. The Lord has said it, and I will say what he says, and I will not I will not make any excuses for it. I will not even try to distance myself from it. The Lord is my light and the light of my salvation. He is my life. I love him uh, more than I love my own skin. And I will not come on these videos and deny the Lord and then say, well, this is just what God says, but I think this. I empty myself that the Lord may speak. And the Lord says to America, I have not forgotten. And so one of the reasons that the punishment of America involves captivity, and one of the reasons that they will not even capture as punishment people and then just put them into whatever transportation vehicles. But what I've seen is ships. I've seen that this trip will not be with Delta and Southwest. I've seen that this transport, this mass transport of people um, across the water is going to take place by ships. It is always ships that I see. There may be some other means and maybe the ships are metaphorical. However, this is not what I see. I will share again the vision from the other video. I see Americans of all persuasions lined up closely one to another in many, many lines, and they are naked. Men are naked, children are naked, women are naked. And as I said, I thank the Lord that the Lord does not show me frontal nakedness. That would be just too much for me. But I always see the back of people 
And this is what it says here in Isaiah 20, that the captives will be walking barefoot with their buttocks bared. And that is what I always see in these visions, naked people huddled together, trying to have modesty linked one by another. And I always see them from the back and I see their back nakedness. And the Lord said that this will come upon this nation. So I'm going to end the first part of the video here. Unfortunately, the light is fading. So this will be the only upload that I make today. But tomorrow I will, I will do my best to continue because I have not even touched on the meat, so to speak, of the prophecy, send for their flesh. But you're welcome to go to the blog. All the information will be in the description box below. I really ask you, when you watch these videos, please don't pay attention to me. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Read the description box because I do endeavor to put all the information for this ministry there. The website is there. Um, the, the, uh, there's a little blurb telling you what each prophecy is. The link is there so you can actually go to the blog and read it for yourself because the whole point of these videos is to encourage you to study the prophecies, to read them, and then to begin to reign in your heart and bring it into alignment with where God wants us to be. I do not believe that these judgments are for the righteous. However, brothers and sisters, if I'm honest with you, you would be shocked at the standard, the high standard that is required to be counted by God as the righteous. Yes, the righteous are those who trust in the Lord by faith, who have given themselves over to him, surrendered their lives to him, and confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. But if you are not living a righteous life, if you are not living holy and chaste before God, if you are out there participating in sexual immorality, sleeping with people, looking at people in a sexual way on your job, watching the kind of movies where they're always playing the flutes and the next thing you know, everybody's sleeping with everybody else in the bushes. If your eyes are upon unrighteousness, know that you are partaking in the pornography of the people who are doing those things in the movie, in the music video, on the magazine page, whatever it is. We need to really labor to stay clear of the defilement of this world. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But then I always say to people, treasure is not found on the ground. Maybe a long time ago in some African nations like South Africa and Namibia, yes, it is true. The earth was so rich and fertile that the diamonds used to lie on the surface, but that's not the case anymore. The usual standard is that treasure is buried. Treasure is always buried, which means you have to go digging for it. We need to excavate our souls that righteousness may flow out of us like a well. So I'm going to stop this video here. It's long enough. I thank you for being with me on The Master's Voice. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button. And then after that, hit the notification bell. And then whenever a new video goes up, you'll get it. Please also be in the habit, if you're one of the regular blog users, please be in the habit of checking the YouTube page. I pinned the YouTube page post to the top of the blog. So it's always there. Please be in the habit of checking that page, especially the bottom two, three videos. Those will be the newest videos so you can always stay up to date. I'm trying to modernize the blog in an odd and a weird and unexpected way. I'm trying to modernize myself. I would never be here making videos if God had not asked me to. So please work with me. Check the YouTube page. Check the description box. If you would like to be a support or a blessing to this channel, the information for giving is below. There's absolutely no pressure, but I thank you to anyone who sends me support. It's always well appreciated and I'm grateful. I pray for each and every one of you and I pray that we will... Hmm, I pray that we will work to make our election sure. Not the other election, our election as the righteous before Christ, so that we can see him when he comes back. Bless you. I'm Celestial. This is the Master's Voice. I'll see you guys again tomorrow.
Bye.